Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to order numbers using your TI Inspire CX2 or your regular TI Inspire CX using the ascending and descending functions in the calculator. So let's begin. As you can see here, I have this beautiful ladder, all right? And I'm going to use this ladder to help us distinguish between ascending and descending, okay? So the ladder normally goes on the ground, so I'm going to start at zero, okay? And as I go up the ladder, you're going to see that my numbers are increasing, okay? So once as my numbers are increasing, that means my numbers are getting bigger. They're going from smallest to largest. So we call this ascending, okay? And as I go down the ladder, you're going to see that my numbers are decreasing until I hit the floor again. So these are called, from largest to smallest, it's called descending. We're going down. So now let's go ahead and do some questions. The students in Mr. Gomez's class measure silver boards and record the lengths in the table shown. Which list shows the numbers the, the length of the boards in order from greatest to least. So they want me to go from greatest to least, from big to small. So if you remember, from small to big, we have ascending. And from big to small, we have descending. So they want us to do descending order. Now, if I look at my table, you can see that I have one, two, three, four mixed fractions, okay? I cannot plug this directly like this into my calculator. I'm going to have to manipulate this to where the calculator can understand what I'm trying to do with this mixed fraction. And if you recall, back in, um, you know, from previous knowledge, we know that 13 and 3 fourths, if I say it, I have 13 and three-fourths, okay? The word and in math means to add, okay? So when I want to plug this into the calculator, when, if I want to plug this mixed fraction into the calculator, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a plus sign between the whole number and the fraction, okay? We're going to have to put a plus sign between the whole number and the fraction, and we want to group it together using parentheses because we want the calculator to add the 13 and the 3 fourths, okay? So that's very important. So anytime I have a mixed fraction, I want to put a plus sign between the whole number and the fraction. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I always want to group them by putting parentheses. So I have my whole number, plus my fraction. This number is just an integer. It is a rational number. It is a whole number. So I'm going to leave it as 14. This right here is a mixed fraction. So again, anytime I have a mixed fraction, I have to put the whole number. And in between the whole number, I have to put the plus sign and 3 eighths. So I always put the plus sign between the whole number and the fraction. I have another mixed number, so I'm going to put 13 plus 1 fourth. And lastly, I have the last mixed number. So again, I have to put the plus sign between the whole number and the fraction. Now that I rewrote my mixed fractions, we're going to go ahead and go into the calculator so that we can find um, our answer in descending order. So this is just the list of numbers. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to go to list and spreadsheets. This is used for list of numbers, OK? Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get the exact number, OK? So I have to put an equal sign before the number. So I'm going to put equals, and I have 13 and 3 4. So I'm going to put parentheses because we want to group it together. I'm going to put 13 plus control divide 3 fourths. And if you noticed, it changed it into an improper fraction. It changed it. However, when I click up, 
and I click on that number right here in the bottom, you can still see that it says 13 plus 3 fourths, which is exactly what we have here. So it's going to convert it into a decimal or it might convert it to a improper fraction. So don't freak out because when I go up on the number, when I click on the number, you can see that the mixed fraction is still there. Okay, that is why we put the equal sign. Okay, look what happens when I don't put the equal sign. You see how it keeps it like that? So it's very important that you put the equal sign because you want it to give you the exact number. Okay, so my next number is 14. So again, I have to put equals to 14. Then I have 13 and 3 eighths, so I have to put equals. So your parentheses, 13 plus, control divide, 3 eighths. See how it turned into an improper fraction? Again, don't freak out because when I click up, you can see that it 107 divided by 8 is 13 and 3 eighths. So it just changes it to an improper fraction. I have equals, parentheses, 13 plus, control divide, 1 fourth, enter. And my last number is equals, parentheses, 13 plus 2 thirds. Control divide, 2 thirds. Now that I have all the numbers on here, what you're going to do is you want to go all the way up. You want to go all the way up to letter A. Okay. So you're going to click the arrow till you get all the way up to letter A. Okay. Once you're all the way up to letter A, you're going to click on menu. You're going to go to actions and you want to go to sort. And then click enter. So now you have the option. You see how it says sort by A? Well, the reason why it says A is because all of these numbers are in column A. As you can see right here, it's in column A. Now, in column A, what do you want to sort it by? Do you want it to be ascending or descending? So you're going to click on the arrow, and you want it to go from greatest to least, which is descending. So I'm going to click down. I'm going to click descending, and I'm going to click OK. And you're going to notice that my numbers have now changed. Do you see that? So when I click down, my first number should be 14. They all have 14 first. So now let's go to the second number. Even though it says 55 over 4, if I check the bottom, this, the, the number is 13 plus 3 fourths. So which one has 13 plus 3 fourths? Here I have 13 and 3 eighths. 13 and 3 fourths, 13 and 3 eighths, and 13 and 3 fourths. So I know that letter H and letter F are out. If I click down again, I have 13 and 2 thirds. So let's look at the next number. It's between G and J. I have 13 and 2 thirds. So far, so good. If I click down, I have 107 divided by 8 but it actually means 13 and 3 eighths. So if I look at the next number, this one is 13 and 1 fourth, and this is 13 and 3 eighths. Therefore, letter G cannot be my answer. My answer is letter J. Now, miss, what happens if the sort doesn't come out for me? If for whatever reason your sort does not work, it's because you did not go all the way up to letter A. You see that? If I go to menu, action, sort, it doesn't let me go there. That means that I did not go all the way to letter A. And you can see the blue box. The blue box is on, on box number four. So I have to go all the way back to letter A. From there, I can go to menu, actions, and sort. See that? Let's go ahead and do another problem. Let's look at this problem. Maria needs to order the list of numbers from least to greatest. 
Here are my numbers. Which list shows them in the correct order? So my vocabulary word is from least to greatest. And if you remember, I have two types. From smallest to biggest is ascending. And from big to small is descending. So they want me to go from least to greatest. So least to greatest is ascending. Okay? So here I do not have any mixed fractions. They're all just regular fractions. Okay? So again, this is just a list of numbers. So what I like about this calculator is that when I'm using the ascending and descending function, I can just go on to the next column. Okay? So in this column, we're going to go ahead and plug in all of our numbers. So the first number I have is one half. So remember, I always must put equals and then type in my number. Control divide, one half. Equals, control divide, five over two. Enter, equals, I have a negative. So remember that this button right here below the three is the negative number. The one with the plus sign is the subtraction sign. So negative is the number, is the symbol below the number three, and a minus goes with the plus. So I want to click on the negative number. On your calculator, it's going to be a white button with parentheses. So this is negative three fourths. So control divide three fourths equals. Now I have the radical sign. I have the square root of four. So to put the square root, you're going to click on the book. Click on number four. So you're going to click on number four, and you're going to look for the radical sign. You're going to look for the square root. So here it is. You see that? And it says square root, and you can click enter. All right? Or if you want to know the shortcut, all you have to do is put control x squared. I personally like control x squared, but if you want to use the book, that's okay. So control x squared, and I'm going to put a four. Enter. Equals, I have the square root of five, so I'm going to put control x squared which is right next to number four, and I'm going to put five. And my last number is equals to one half, negative one half. So equals to negative, control divide, one half. Oops, I forgot the negative. So equals negative, control divide, one half. Enter. Now, as you can see, again, this one changed it to a decimal. But if I look in the bottom, it's still the square root of 5. So we have to go all the way up. Before, we went all the way up to letter A, but now we're going to go all the way up to letter B. We're going to click on Menu, Actions, Sort. Now you want the calculator. See, so this is column B. All of my numbers right now are in column B. See how they're in column B? So on those numbers, we want them to ascend or descend. And in this situation, we want them to ascend from least to greatest, from smallest to biggest. So it's already in ascending order. So I'm just going to click OK. And notice how now everything switched. If I click the down arrow, the first number should be negative 3 fourths. So here I have a negative 1 half, negative 3 fourths negative one half and negative three fourths. So I know that the answer is not letter F and it's not letter H. So it's between G and J. So let's click down. The next thing that I have is a negative one half. So let's go ahead and check our uh, answer choices. I have a negative one half and a negative one half. So far, so good. Finally, let me check one more. I have a positive one half. So, so far, they're both in the run. They're both the same. Let's check the other one. I have the number two, 
But if you notice, there's no two here. But if I look at the bottom, two is actually the square root of four. See that? And if I look at my answer choices, they both have the square root of four. So let's look at one more. Here it is. I have 2.23. But again, none of these have 2.23. But if I look at the bottom, I see that I have the square root of five. And the only one that has the square root of five is letter G. So letter G is my answer. Let's do one more. Go ahead and do this one by yourself. It says, Jose's record records the deposit and withdrawal transaction in his bank account. Here it is. Which list shows the transaction in increasing order? So increasing means we're going to go from small to big. So we have ascending. We want to increase. So let's go to our calculator. I'm going to go to column C. Okay. So I'm going to start with my first number. Equals to 15.20. Equals to negative. 23.44, enter, equals, always put the equal sign, negative 3.75, equals to 9.01, and equals to negative 1.68, enter. Now remember, I have to go all the way up. In this case, I'm going to go all the way up to letter C because that's where I have my numbers. Go to menu, actions, sort, and we want to put it in ascending order. So click OK. So notice that the numbers have changed. So my first number should be negative 23.44. So letter A and B are out. Then I have negative 3.75. So my answer should be letter D as in dog. All right, guys. So this is it for today. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.